Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. There's some really expensively priced boas out there, and I'm always amazed by some of the crazy prices that some of these boas go for. Today I want to review some of the most expensive boas available, including both locality and morph boas. I'm even going to discuss some boas that aren't even available yet on the market, but when they hit the market, they're sure to be crazy sky high, so make sure you stay tuned for that. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. I'd really appreciate if you would subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future BOA videos and hit the like button so YouTube will recommend my content to additional viewers. The first point I want to make is that a more expensive BOA does not equal a better pet BOA. There's a lot of really great BOAs out there in the $100 to $200 range, so don't feel you need to buy one of these expensive BOAs as a great pet. These expensive BOAs don't make better pets than your normal common garden variety pet store Colombian BOA. So what makes a BOA expensive? Well, it all comes down to supply and demand. When you have a high demand and a low supply, the price is going to go up. And this can happen in a number of different ways. So you can have a locality boa that's just rare and it's hard to breed, so there's very few of them available. You can have a morph boa that has recently been introduced and there's only a handful available, so the supply is very low. Or you can have a boa that has a medium supply, but suddenly gets much more popular. There's a resurgence in popularity, and the demand outweighs the supply, so the price goes up. And in general, the trend I've seen on prices of boas in the last 10 years or so is that locality boas have been going up a lot, whereas morph boas in general have been going down. You know, as more people are breeding the morph boas, there's more available, and you know, the supply outweighs the demand so the price drops. But interestingly in the last few years I've seen even certain morph boas have been going up in price. So these are ones that had their initial price when they first came out and then they declined in value over time but now they're starting to come up again. So it's interesting watching the economics of these boas. So I'm going to start off with some expensively priced locality boas and in general work from the less expensive to the more expensive. And the first expensive locality boa is the Argentine boa, boa constrictor occidentalis. And so I've said many times before these are one of my favorite locality boas and I just love these animals. But it's amazing how the price has shot up in the last few years. Going back only about five to 10 years, these animals were relatively inexpensive. They were available as uh, inexpensively as around $200 a piece. And then suddenly, about four or five years ago, they just started to shoot up in value. It seemed like the supply had dried up, but there was this huge resurgence in popularity. And the current market value of an Argentine boa baby is now eight hundred to a thousand dollars. It's kind of incredible. Even just you know two years ago, it was about half that. So Argentine boas, you know, obviously have a lot going for them. They're beautiful. They're big. They're impressive. And there's just not that much of a supply. So there's you know the demand far outweighs the supply. That eight hundred to a thousand dollar estimate is for a normal wild type Argentine boa. If we're talking about a Max Pink or a uh, T-positive albino or some other type of morph, it's going to be even more expensive. And I'm often asked if I think that the price will come back down to the levels that we saw five or ten years ago, and I don't think it will. I think these animals were very undervalued for a long time, and the current valuation is really a fair valuation given the supply and the demand. The next expensive locality boa is the Suriname red tail. And it's not surprising that these boas are on the expensive side given their beauty, rarity, and the fact that they're the epitome of a true red tail boa. And so right now the going rate for Surinams is anywhere from about $500 up to many thousands of dollars. That's for captive bred offspring. Wild caught animals can be obtained at a lower price, but they are a lot harder to acclimate and may have health issues. So when we talk about true red tail boas from Suriname, uh, there's this perception that there's a lot of difference in quality. And to some extent that that is true, although probably not as much as people make it out to be. But people will often pay 
you know, three or four times the price of the average animal in a litter for what they consider the top quality or the, you know, the pick of the litter. Um, this is, this guy is a uh, animal born here in 2014 and, you know, beautiful looking animal with round saddles that I held back. So people are obsessed with bloodlines when it comes to their red tail boa, specifically the Surinams. And if you have an animal that has a designer bloodline like Futo or Rio Bravo or Florida red tails, people based on that alone will likely be willing to pay several times a boa without that bloodline. And to me, this seems like a designer label like you would pay for on clothing or something. You know, personally, I like to look at the beauty of the boa um, rather than the bloodline when I decide if I'm going to add a boa to my collection. But, you know, the fact that they have these mystique associated with certain bloodlines, people will pay, in some cases, many thousands of dollars for the animal from the right bloodline. One more expensive locality boa, and not surprisingly, it's another form of true red tail boa. This is a Peruvian red tail, specifically from the Pacalpa locality. And it's not hard to see why these guys are expensive. They're just extremely impressive animals. Definitely one of my all time favorite boas, you know, and truly a magnificent animal to behold. So these guys right now, the current market value is anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000. So pretty expensive animal. However, these animals have always been relatively expensive and it seems like the supply has just really dried up in the last five or 10 years. There's just not a lot of people breeding these. They're not easy to breed and you know, they need to be a certain age. You know, so the supply is just not there. And you know, people love these animals. They're just so amazing to look at. Um, this guy is a holdback from uh, 2015 and I'm actually breeding him right now. So fingers crossed for some babies from this guy. But you can see his beautiful golden colors. You know, he's got these beautiful thin saddles that are slightly peaked and this, you know, gorgeous speckled belly. Just an absolutely breathtaking animal. And Pocalpa Peruvians are among the most expensive of the locality boas. But again, they're one of my all time favorites. And I think that the high price is certainly warranted for such a magnificent animal. So those were some of the most expensive locality boas. Now I want to show you some of the most expensive morph boas. For this video, most of these morphs I'm going to talk about are single gene morphs. I know when you have combo morphs with all these genes, they get more and more expensive. But we're just going to talk about the single genes, at least for right now. And the first expensive morph is the IMG, or increasing melanin gene boa. And this is actually a hypo IMG, but you can see the effects of the IMG gene are that you get this increase in melanin dark pigment over time. This animal is about a year and a half old. She's gotten darker over time and eventually she'll get even darker. So it's just a really cool gene. It combines well with a lot of other genes and combos. And another advantage is it's an incomplete dominant gene, which means the animal expresses the phenotype with just one copy of the gene. So I could breed this animal with a non-IMG boa and 50% of the offspring will be IMG. So you don't need to worry about hats and you know crossing both animals that have the gene. You can just have one animal with a gene to introduce it into a breeding project. So this particular gene is currently selling for about $800 to $1,000 for just IMG animals alone. When you add in hypo or jungle or you know other genes, anery, the price goes up into the thousands. But it's really a spectacular morph. I think it's well worth the price. Um, $1,000 is about my limit for purchasing a boa. You know, I, I don't have really deep pockets and that's about as much as I can spend. And the IMG is right at that limit of what I would spend on a boa. But I'm really happy with the, you know, the two IMG boas I have in my collection and look forward to breeding them in the future. The next expensive morph, unfortunately, I don't have one to show you, but there are plenty of pictures on the net. And this morph is called Scoria. And Scoria is a very spectacular looking morph. These animals have a greatly reduced pattern with this kind of warmish, orangish, pinkish, tannish ground color. They have bright red saddles on the tail and they typically will have some markings on their side and sometimes a reduced saddles. They're very unique looking. They look different from other types of boas. Um, 
this is one morph that I think looks best as a single gene morph. I think when you try to breed other genes in, it kind of dilutes the effect. And the scoria by itself is so spectacular, I wouldn't want to dilute that effect. Uh, the price right now for these scoria boas is anywhere from about 2000 up to around $10,000. So they're not cheap. And they're also a mysterious boa because they've been around for at least around 15 years, but they're still rare and there's not too many of them to go around. Um, there's some issues with neurological effects. So the animals will commonly have a head wobble. So when you hold the animal still, the head kind of shakes a little bit back and forth. It's similar to the spider gene in ball pythons. And the animals at the lower end of the price spectrum for around $2,000 will typically have the head wobble. If you don't want to get the wobble, you have to pay extra money. And so this wobble is almost definitely due to the gene itself. So it's really not something that uh, might be amenable to breed out, unfortunately. There's a lot of mystery about scoria. It's still not completely clear the genetic mode of inheritance, whether this is a dominant gene or an incomplete dominant gene, and the health effects are also not really all that well understood. Um, I think the scoria is a cool looking animal. You know, personally, I wouldn't want to pick one up until the price came down to around a thousand or so and you know the neurological effects were better understood so i may never have a scoria in my collection but it's something cool to watch and to see you know how the breeding of the scoria boas will develop one more single gene morph that's also among the most expensive boas available and that is the leucistic boa the leucistic boa is also known as the superfire or the princess diamond or the Emperor Diamond Boa, and it's basically an all-white animal that's quite spectacular to behold. So the animals usually have a few dark scales or a few yellow scales, and they have these dark black eyes. Um, really spectacular looking boa, and it's another boa that really shouldn't be combined with other morphs because you don't want to dilute you know, the beauty of the leucistic boa, and also the all-white boa will override uh, you know, the influence of some of these other genes. So this is actually not a leucistic boa. This is a moon glow boa. So the moon glow boa is a combo morph that has the call albino, the anerythristic, and the hypogene. And I refer to this animal as a poor man's uh, leucistic boa. It's pretty much whitish, but you can see the pattern. You can also see the yellowish color. Whereas these leucistic boas, they don't have the underlying pattern. So while this animal currently the market value is around $1,000 on a moon glow boa, a leucistic boa is anywhere from $3,000 up to $10,000. So among the most expensive boas that are available. And so the leucistic boa is actually the super form of the fire boa. And if the animal has one copy of the gene, it's called a fire. And fire boas have pretty much normal looking pattern, although it's somewhat reduced and it's, you know, they're somewhat lighter in color than a normal boa. And they also will typically have a whitish patch under their chin that identifies them as being a fire boa. When you breed together two fire boas, there is a 25% chance, or you know, one out of four babies will have two copies of the gene. They'll be super fires and they'll be leucistic. Um, if the animal is a female, that's referred to as a princess diamond. If the animal is a male, it's referred to as an emperor diamond. And so right now, the uh, single gene fire boas are in the range of about $600 to $1,000 each. So when you can get two of these, it's a you know, less expensive way to get into a breeding project with the leucistic boa. There's a lot of controversy surrounding the Superfire leucistic boas because the original founder animal was illegally smuggled out of Brazil. So it was a true red tail boa, BCC, that was smuggled out of Brazil into the United States to start the project. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the details of that, but I'll just say that at this point, the gene is well established in the US captive breeding population. Um, I might go into the you know, story of the leucistic boa in a future episode. Um, and you know, the price seems to be coming down now. They're still quite expensive, but they have dropped quite a bit from you know, when they were first available uh, a few years ago. 
The next type of bow I'm going to talk about that's really expensive is just referred to as a genetic powerhouse. And this can be a number of different types of boa. And by genetic powerhouse, I mean a boa that has a lot of different morph genes and thus has a lot of potential for breeding. And so we're talking about an animal that has at least three or four genes and maybe up to five or six. When somebody buys one of these genetic powerhouse types of boas, they're really buying it as a breeding investment more often rather than just a beautiful boa to look at and to enjoy as a pet. Um, I as personally, I think that the best morph combo morph animals have like two or three genes. I think when you have too many genes in a boa, it dilutes the impact of each gene. And you want to pick genes that go well together, like the hypo jungle or the albino and the hypo. But if you have one of these powerhouse boas, you can cross it with a lot of other boas and you have a lot of possibilities as far as the offspring. And so this is about as close to a powerhouse bow as I have. This is a VPIT positive albino jungle hypo that's possibly het for VPI. So if it proves out to be het, that's four genes right there. And I think it's a beautiful animal. You know, I didn't specifically buy it as a powerhouse boa, but you know, I thought I'd show you her for the, you know, for this segment. I looked on um, Morph Market just to see what types of these powerhouse boas are available and I actually saw some up there recently so for example a VPI T positive albino hypo jungle IMG motley that's hat for anery in blood so that's five visuals plus two hats or a VPI anery hypo Aztec jungle Key West hat sterling six visuals in a hat or sharp snow glow which is the snow glow is the hypo plus the anery motley jungle uh, so five genes. So we're talking about a lot of genes, so a lot of possibilities for breeding. Um, you can also have a powerhouse boa that has fewer genes, but they're really expensive genes. For example, a sun glow, which is hypo and albino and scoria. So those three genes, that's a very expensive animal because of that scoria gene. And so these powerhouse boas, they're costing anywhere from around 2000 up to around $12,000. Um, and again, people buy them just because of their potential, you know, for breeding and their investment potential. Um, when you're talking about a male boa that has a lot of genes, that's typically priced more than the corresponding female because a male you can breed with multiple females, you can breed a male more often, etc. So there's more of an investment value in a male powerhouse boa. The last two types of expensive boas I'm going to discuss are in existence, but they're not yet commercially available. However, there's the potential these animals might enter the market sometime in the next five to ten years. So the first of them is a albino true red tail boa, boa constrictor constrictor. And there have been a number of albino true red tails which have cropped up over the years and people have attempted to establish lines. But unfortunately, there has not yet been a successful true red tail boa albino line established in captivity. So most recently, the uh, reptile store Snakes at Sunset in South Florida, just last year, had some albino true red tail boas. These are Suriname boas that were true albinos and they were 100% pure Suriname locality boas. And they sold them for $15,000 a piece. I'm not sure who bought them. It looks like they're no longer available. And so hopefully the person who bought them will be successful and establish a line of pure Suriname albino red tail boas. And so I should point out that it's currently possible to have an albino that has some true red tail boa in it. For example, this albino is a call that's 25% Guiana true red tail boa, but this animal was created by breeding an albino common boa to a Suriname, or in this case a Guiana red tail boa. It's not a pure uh, red tail boa, and it would be impossible to make this animal pure, even if you kept breeding it back to the uh, true red tail boa lineage. All the established lines of albino, the call, the sharp, the various T positives, originated in non-true red tail boas, mostly in uh, Colombian boa imperator, some also in Central American boas. But there are as yet no pure uh, true red tail boas available. 
So the price, of course, seems a little high, $15,000. But when we think back to the original call albinos that originated back in the early 90s, at the time, those animals were selling for $10,000, which is probably about $30,000 in today's money. So maybe the $15,000 was not that expensive of a price. However, we have to remember there already are albinos and these true red tail albinos don't look all that much different from just a normal uh, albino boa, a common boa. So I gotta wonder if people are really going to, uh, you know, wanna pay this extra money to get a true red tail albino when they can get a non red tail albino for a fraction of the price. So we'll have to see how much these animals sell for if and when they do become available on the market. The last really expensive boa I'm gonna discuss is called the pied or piebald boa. And this is an animal that only recently cropped up and hasn't been bred yet. But a piebald animal has the normal pattern, but the normal pattern and color are interrupted by splotches of pure white. And it's a relatively common mutation in a number of different animals. Many dogs have the piebald. They have kind of a white background color with spots of color. Cats have it. You know, the Holstein cows, those dairy cows you see that are white with the black spots, those are pied. And the genetic basis is similar in all these animals. There are other types of snakes that are pied. The most famous is the pied ball python. And this is one of the most spectacular and popular morphs in ball pythons. But until recently, there were no pied boas. But then back in 2018, somebody found this boa, apparently, um, outside of Mexico City. So it's actually a dwarf Mexican boa. And the animal has the normal brown color to its back, but the sides and the belly are pure white. It doesn't have the splotches of white along its backbone, like I've seen a lot of the pied ball pythons, uh, but it is a pied animal. And so this animal, apparently they're trying to breed it now. They need to show that it's a genetic form of pied and it's not just some mutation or you know just some aberration that's not genetic. Um, they have to see what the next generation looks like. But if it does prove out to be genetic and it's established as a morph, it's sure to be crazy expensive. I would say, I'm guessing 20 to $30,000. I mean, people have been waiting for this thing for a long, long time. Personally, I don't really find them all that appealing. Um, I'd rather have just a normal wild type Mexican boa. So, you know, it wouldn't be nearly worth 20 or 30,000 to me. But you know, for someone that wants to get in on the morph like this, I don't. I probably would imagine that the market would bear that type of price tag. So we'll have to see um, if this uh, morph does prove out to be genetic and it's established in captivity. But it should be exciting in the next few years ahead. So those were some really expensive boas. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a line via social media. I'd really appreciate if you would subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.